Hey everyone, you're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash. Here's today's comic. Freedom Fighters, number two, Plastic Nightmare. 12 issue maxi series by the man, Robert Venditti. And uh, I don't know the artist's first name. But there's a look at the cover. Uh, the first issue of this book didn't get stellar reviews. Um, I can kind of see why. I, I didn't give it a stellar review. I thought it was okay. I enjoyed it, but I didn't. It didn't wow me. Um, but that being said, it was only the first issue. And as I, as I've said many times in different <laughs> books that I've reviewed uh, for first issues, um, I think you need to give them a, a more than just an issue. Especially when it's a mini series, because a mini series is designed as one big larger story, right? Where ongoing series can be all sorts of mixing. You can have a one issue story, you can have an ongoing story arc, you could have this intensely long continuous saga like the X Men of the old days. Um, so ongoings are a little bit different, but a mini series usually, like I said, is one self contained large story, you know, this will be put together like a graphic novel eventually. Um, that being said, you know, you don't read a book, read the first chapter and know if the book's going to be great or not. Um, you know, obviously that doesn't mean you're obligated to continue on with the book. I mean, it is the book's job to hook you and, and, and get, you know, get you engaged. I just try to be, I guess, a little more forgiving or open-minded because sometimes uh, the payoff can be worth it. So I'm going to assume you've re either read the book, at least the first issue, or watched my review. So I have to recap anything. Um, basically, here we are at the end of the first book where the Freedom Fighters have just shown up and the book starts off, Welcome to Earth X where Nazi Germany's metahuman war machine conquered the planet. Dallas, Texas, today. It's been a long time since America believed in heroes. Some people are too young to ever have even seen one. Others are so old they've almost forgotten. Still, others spent their whole lives with their head down. It's safer that way. No matter their story, None of them think about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness anymore. They don't have American dreams. That's how the Nazi conquerors wanted America to be. I just want to point out something real quick. This is a pretty diverse, uh, well, maybe not as diverse as I thought. I see, saw this last frame and I was like, this is a diverse America. Like in under, Not that that's a problem, I'm just saying it's under Nazi Germany. And, you know, Nazi Germany wasn't famous for its... Ethnic diversity, if you get my drift. Whoa, so we flip off to the next page, and I'll have to pan out here. Look at this. Um, <laughs> I'm a sucker for big-ass robot sentinels fighting off the resistance. Uh, I love that in X-Men. I'm a fan of resistance stories in general, which is what I, one of the reasons I got this book. Um, I love, you know, Star Wars The Rebellion. You got Terminator... Uh, you know, the resistance versus the machines, uh, Matrix, again, resistance versus the machines, X-Men were, you know, had the days of future past resisting the Sentinel machines. That's a kind of a running theme here, but uh, these kind of were very evocative of Sentinels for me. Back in better times when Marvel Comics was good and X-Men uh, ruled all comicdom. So we get to hell with that. To finish off the last bit of dialogue, we've got the robot, Heil Hitler. <laughs> I can imagine like a robot voice saying Heil Hitler. Damn it, uh, Bats, I'm sniffling on camera just like you now. I think I got something through the internet. Move, move, move. And here we have the Freedom Fighters. Doll Woman. Tiny, giant, tiny package, giant attitude. That's a pet peeve of mine when they do the little censored out swear words. Like, I'm, I'm assuming she's saying fuck me. 
I don't know what else she would say. Um, what is, what other swear words that could there be? Just come up with something different. I mean, you're a writer, be creative. This is a comic book. I know comics really aren't for kids anymore, but they should be for all ages. Like, this, this comic should be designed so that a 10-year-old can read it. Um, and if you're just censoring out the word, I did, I, that bothers me too because, like, look, you're, we all, all of us with the brain know that she's saying, fuck me. But changing it to symbols doesn't change what she's saying. It just we have to translate it. If it's actually said the word F-U-C-K, those would just be symbols telling us that she's saying fuck, whatever. It's, it's so stupid. So stupid. Like, that's not offensive as long as you blur out the letters. Even though everyone knows what she's saying, I, I'll never understand that. Black Condor carries the weight of the world on his wings. How come in comics, every co character with black in front of their name actually is black? A black person? Like, that's a really tired trope. Like, that's another pet. I, I would like to see that change. They shouldn't be called black whatever because they are black anymore that you'd call, like, her white doll. Like, that's just dumb. Um, Phantom Lady, from the darkness, light. And then Human Bomb, the man with the TNT touch. All right, the gloves are off. Together they're the Freedom Fighters. And they're living the American nightmare. Um, this issue is really not going to be easy to review. And you're going to kind of see why as I go through. Spoiler alert. It's a big-ass battle, and a really cool one. Uh, I like the art. Much more impressed with the art this episode, or issue than the previous. Um, it's The camera is really probably not doing this justice. Uh, and they fight this giant sentinel um, called the Iron Polizist. And here we see it, Central Command. It's like, oh, the Iron Polizist is down, Commander. But the Fuhrer said the Freedom Fighters were captured and killed. Commander, how do we respond? You know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know my accent. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if that sounded really bad, that was... I'd like to say that was on purpose, but I can't do accents. Um, so, here we have, again, they're fighting. We see a bunch of people watching, like, holy shit, nearly 50 years. I've never seen an iron police on its back. How? Dude, with the helmet, it's for real. Get up, bozo. Fight me like a man. I thought that was a little corny. Like, it's a robot. But whatever. Doll, you're up. Going down. Two minutes, I'll be in his guts. So, I was really like liking the the dialogue here. It just it kind of fit. It's very comic booky, but not silly. Uh, then the robot gets back up. Re-engaging terrorists. There again, it's a cool. I think that is a cool design for this robot. So it's like round two, get these people out of here. Um, so they keep fighting, and like I said, it's like hard to review because I mean I'm just showing you a fight. You should get these books anyway. I shouldn't have to just spoil uh, spoil things for everyone. It's like yeah, I'll use Action Comics to read all my books. Um, so as you'd expect, they win the day. Uh, it's a hard fought battle. There's another cool shot. Um, it's a hard fought battle. Oh, and then they like take on the German pretty violently here. Um, and uh, there's a really cool kind of scene um, where they're like fighting and it's got bomb, the bomb man. Is that his name? I forgot his name. They just said it and I already forgot his name. These aren't really rememberable character names. <laughs> um... He says, you feel that, kid? That weird sensation growing in your chest? Seeing is believing. And it's a robot down in the background. And he takes off his helmet. The Razzis want to keep a lid, a tight lid on hope. Today, the Freedom Fighters blew the lid off. Um, and that was a, this was a cool, I like this part of the scene. Like, I, I like inspirational heroes, and I like... Uh, heroes that that bring hope to others, like it's kind of like something that 
in superheroes in comic them that's like a kind of what it's all about uh, so their ship <laughs> flies in nice patriotic thing here um the blue tracer is on site for evac so they fly in it's all very uh you know shock and awe <laughs> uh, winning the hearts and minds if you will um so there's more jack boots incoming so they're on their way out and it says today was a message to the occupiers the fight is only beginning. We can't do it alone. America can be what it was meant to be, but you we need you to make it happen. Tell your friends. Even better, tell your enemies. Freedom is on the way. And it's like, bring him back. Believe. They're throwing these little pamphlets, propaganda pamphlets down. Um, and then there was a cool little bit at the end here with some narration. And it's like, heroes exist. The heartland. The extra-dimensional realm of ideas. Ah, oh, look, it's dead. No wonder Marvel can't come up with anything. The, oh, realm of uh, not house of ideas. Marvel needs maybe to go to realm of ideas. That's their problem. Hmm. Anyways, so it's Heartland. The heroes exist. They inspire the good. You know, it's people like yeah. To see a ray of hope and light coming down the tree. And the evil. And here we see this little kid. And you're like, yeah, he's got his pamphlet. Why is he all evil, kid? To feel a flood of fear. Oh, so I didn't get that right. So it's like here's like heroes exist to inspire the good, to see a ray of hope, and the evil to feel a flood of fear. Hey, kid, join the party. The heroes are back. When the good hope and the evil fear, and he's like all crumpling up, <laughs> the sleeping giant awakens, and here we see Uncle Sam is waking up, going to come back and help the freedom fighters. And then we see the kid's not a kid at all, Mr. Smith. Great, he's got a lot of Matrix themes going on here, but that's not terribly unexpected as the Matrix was kind of a universal theme. I have a field to report. It's like Terminator 2 thing here, like pinned through the eye. No, it's not. He's plastic, man. I must see the theater at once. He's not actually plastic, man, but he's a plastic man. Um, I'm not sure how there's more of them or how that works at all, but um, that's the issue. Chapter 2, The Sleeping Giant. There's the credits for you if you are a person that cares about the credits. Eddie Barrows is a penciler. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed this issue. Um, it's not knock your socks off comics. Um, it's written by Robert Venditti, who does Hawkman, who I just said a big thing about. And Hawkman is, oh my God, stellar. That needs to be on your reading list. Um, but this is just kind of what I want out of comics. This is good fun. Um, this is what comics should be. I kind of know why people were disappointed in the first issue a little bit, because not a lot really happened, but nothing bad happened either. One of the things I was thinking about when I was reading this book was that I think these these two issues would have gone really well together as like a 48-page, you know, prestige format book rather than separate books. Had I think had people read issues one and two, like, like eventually I did, because I gave it a chance... I think that people would have been happier. The ones that, that that stopped buying, I think people, they maybe not. They would have, they might have been won over. Because this book alone is just a big fight scene. And like, you read this book by itself and it's kind of weak because all it is is fighting and it's not a lot. But you put them together and the story is more cohesive. Um, and it's... It, you get some drama, you get some world building, you get some characterization, you get some action, you get a good mixed bag, and that's what usually makes a good story. You don't want to have too much of one thing in the absence of the other. And um, so for me, I really enjoyed it. Uh, this fight was a good payoff to the setup of the first book, introduction of the world. There's a couple of scenes, like I pointed out, that, you know, the whole passing on hope to the kid uh, got me a little choked up for a second, and that's just because of me, like, I... I just have a, a real big soft spot for these type of stories, and I, I liked it. I like where this is going. 
Uh, I liked that they actually referred to this as, as Nazis a couple points. They're still using the Razi term, but they actually said Nazi. And before I read the book, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's okay that they say Razi because I know in Germany it's illegal to show Nazi symbolism and things like that. Like, you, you go to jail. <laughs> so these comics couldn't even, if they had, like, if authentic Nazi imagery and stuff, they, these comics couldn't be sold in Germany. Which I'm, I'm sure there's a German market. So I kind of get in today's day and age. And that's kind of sad that we have to pander to that. Because that in itself seems kind of fascist to me. But whatever, it's ironic. I'm okay. Um, it's a fantasy setting. It's a book. Um, it's a little annoyance. But they did use Nazi term here and there. So Razi's sounds like it's a... Uh, they make it feel like Razi's not just a hang up of... DC Comics, but it's actually a real, like, nickname that, that evolved in this world for some reason. I wish maybe Venditti could explore why people are using Razi instead of Nazi and, and give it some more legitimacy. That'd be pretty cool. But this is a thumbs up. This is better than the first issue. Um, it, 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 assuming you read the first issue, I think by itself, it's a little weaker because, like I said, it's just one big long fight, but it continues the first story. I think it makes the first issue better. Um, I'm happy. I like the art better, even though it's the same artist. I just, I don't know. I think the scenes, uh, the artist got to show off or just draw cooler shit. Um, so yeah, thumbs up, move the needle. Um, and that's all I got to say. Hopefully, uh, people give it a second chance. Robert Venditti is someone that you should be following. And if, if not this Hawkman, for sure Hawkman. All right, thanks for watching. You still here? All right, well, I'm gonna have a second bonus piece. Take a look at this. Female Furies. DC, oh, what the, what the? Oh, the future of the fourth world is female. What is this? Oh no, oh, God. What is this? What? What? What is this? Oh my God. Ah. DC, DC. Yeah. Oh, I have to shake my head. Da da da, Wonder Comics! Wonder Twin Powers, activate! Oh, yeah. By now, you probably know about the controversy of Wonder Twins, but I'm going to throw in. Why not? I got it in my book. I paid for it. Get a little free preview, just like everyone else has shown. Mark Russell. Oh, good old Mark Russell. You know, the guy who uh, attacks fans in the comics and writes n nasty allegories. Uh, like in Harley Quinn number 56, see my review. It is utter trash. What a twins number one sneak preview. Oh, look at that. Sad elephants. Oh, who could he be referring to? Oh, the GOP? No, I, I can't be. That can't be. I'm sure that's not. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Oh. So here we see. High school, it gets weirder. That's an appropriate name. And here we see Jan, is it her name Zan? I forget her name. The Wonder Twin characters are like throwaway characters. They were like for super friends. I never, I don't understand trying to legitimize them. So here we get some awesome dialogue. We will all miss Toby terribly, but then to hurt is to have lived. She's doing school announcements. I don't think that happens anymore. Who's the new girl? That's Jaina. She's so shy, I thought doing an announcement would bring her out of her shell. That's some teacher of the year work, Greaves. Really? <laughs> That's all it takes to get teacher of the year? Whatever. Okay, so they're in school and they're doing this dumb thing of like um, finally, today is 
Heritage Day, so please take a moment to tell someone how your ancestors embarrassed you. And we got this kid all dressed up as a Dutch boy, right? Because that would totally happen. The Dutch, um, like mayonnaise on their fries. They eat chocolate for breakfast, and everybody rides a bike, but nobody wears a helmet, which is actually pretty baller. <laughs> baller. Thank you, Trevor. Next, we have Zan. Oh, and this is where it gets weirder. If you haven't, if you don't know what's going on, buckle your seatbelt. I come from the planet Exor. Now remember, before I go on, this is Wonder Twins, right? By Mike, Brian Michael Bendis' special new imprint of comics at DC, which is Wonder Comics, all ages, meant to appeal more to youth. I mean, look at this art style. It's meant to be a more young adult or... You know, preteen appealing, which so far kind of kind of seems like that. On XR, there's no poverty or violence. People don't commit crimes unless they're like really bored. Oh, of course, of course, they're just perfect. I mean, humans are the only bad people in the whole universe, anyway. We know this. Um, every every other species of people, everyone, they're just all perfect. Exor has conquered every social problem imaginable. Oh, I'm so shocked. But the food is pretty bland. Mostly protein globules. It's a lot like Sweden, actually. <laughs> Exorians are a modest and sensible people. We're a pretty quiet bunch, actually. And here's the audience of this book. And actually, probably you guys, too. If you're like, Ash, why are you reading this shit to us? Like this, this is literally, if you're reading this book, this is what you look like. This is what I look like right now. Unless there's a thunderstorm. Nice. Look at this. Apparently, uh, Exorzorians or whoever they are, you know, the women all shave their heads too as they're liberated and men are like little bearded hipster looking. It's funny how that works, like, even though they're not human. <sighs> Whenever there's a thunderstorm, Exorian adults will drop whatever they're doing and start tearing off their clothes. Yes, this is the face the readers of the comic would be making when they're reading this, especially if they're kids. Driven mad with thunder lust, Exorians writhe together, bonded into a single rhythm with the night. Oh yeah, look at that, nice little. Now this is a very PG orgy scene, but <laughs> nevertheless, make no mistake, this is what's happening. Everybody takes off their clothes and then they writhe together. That means having sex. <laughs> Women. Oh, come on, focus. Seriously? Women become... Men become women. Women become animals. And the night throbs with their pleasure. Again, there's the audience reading this book. They're... F what the fuck? What am I reading? Okay, Zahn... Many body fluids are involved. That's for, all right. Thanks, Zon. That's all we have for today. So here's the butt of the joke here. Like, the writer is telling us this is not appropriate. We got to escort him away. So you get it? Ha <laughs> ha. Joke's on us. He shouldn't be saying this stuff to kids because it's not appropriate. And yet in this comic for kids, we're saying this and drawing pictures and Having orgies and bestiality. What the literal fuck, DC? <sighs> so how was school today, twin brother? Oh, I don't know, pretty normal. Looking forward to starting work. Yeah, but I hate how they're dropping new things on us. A new job, a new school, a new freaking planet. Since we moved to Earth, they haven't let me stand in one place long enough to figure out anything works. Is this intentional? I mean... 
I was awkward enough before. I know, doesn't give Zan much time to get right with the ladies. What the? What? Since when was Zan about getting right with the ladies? This is the Wonder Twins. I'm willing to give this job a chance. Oh, look. They're rehashing the Wonder Twins story where they apply for a job. Oh, my God. This is such a freaking joke. Hey, look. Here's Naomi. She's involved in the biggest mystery of the DC Universe. What do you want to bet that she is an ultra-powered super being, probably from another planet, maybe even Krypton, and somehow is tied to Superman, and she's super badass and ultra-perfect, and eventually is going to be one of DC's top dog superheroes, or maybe even replace someone like Superman. Maybe Superman is going to die, or... Go away, or something happens, and she's going to have to take us. What, what do you want to bet? That's Bendis 101. Uh, Riri 2.0. All right, thanks for watching this little bonus. Made my video long. Hopefully I didn't hurt my... Uh, <laughs> didn't hurt my algorithm. Not that I have a ton of followers anyway, but if you made it this far, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.